Today we're going to take a tablet and turn it into a preview slash field monitor. This way you don't have to worry about straining your eyes on these tiny little screens on the back of your camera. What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Photography, the show that will teach you how to get awesome film and photos on the cheap. And I'm really excited about today's episode because it has the potential of saving you guys hundreds of dollars. Now, what a field monitor is, it's essentially a separate screen that you could attach to your camera so that you can get a bigger preview of what your camera actually sees. And most field monitors actually cost around like $400 and up, and they're very limited on their features. Most of the time, all that they do is give you that live preview. Now, the app that I'm gonna show you guys today will actually transform your tablet, not just into a preview monitor, but it will also allow you to control many of the settings from your camera. So you could change your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, directly through your tablet. And the best part is, it's only about $8. <laughs> Now before I tell you what app will allow you to do all these awesome things, there are a few key things I have to go over. The first is that this is only available for Canon cameras. So if you're a Nikon or a Sony user, you're out of luck. The second is that this only works on Android devices. So don't go running to the App Store trying to find this app because you're not gonna be able to find it and you won't be able to use this on your iPhone or your iPad. Now if you have an Android phone or tablet, then what you're gonna do is go download DSLR Controller from the Google Play Store. I'm gonna be showing off this app using my 2013 Nexus 7. For me, this is really the perfect size to preview video and it has a resolution that's even better than some of those $400 field monitors. Plus, this tablet is very light and portable. I could easily fit it into my camera bag and have quick access to it wherever I go. When you first have your camera plugged in, it's gonna ask you which app you wanna open it up with. And I just set this to open up with DSLR controller all the time so that all I have to do is just turn on my camera and it goes straight into the app. Inside the app, you'll see a nice sized live preview screen but you'll also have all these controls alongside of it. And this to me is why using a tablet as a field monitor will make all the difference. Because a standard field monitor just lets you see what your camera sees. With DSLR controller, I could actually adjust my shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, white balance, picture style, and a whole bunch of other settings as well. Plus, it makes doing all these things super easy. I could just click the aperture number and jump straight to the f-stop that I want with just a few taps. So those are all the main selling points for DSLR controller. However, it does have some flaws. Now the main issue that you would expect from doing this through a USB cable would be a slow frame rate of the live preview. Now I tested this on both a Canon T2i and a Canon 6D, both with different results. In order to get the best frame rate possible, you really should use the USB cable that comes with your camera. I tried using different USB cables because I really wanted a shorter length cable, and I noticed a big difference in the frame rate. Regular USB cables that I just had laying around gave me a very noticeable dip in the frame rate. When I was using the camera's USB cable, I had pretty much no lag whatsoever and a very smooth frame rate on both the T2i and the 6D. However, once I started actually recording video, then the preview from the T2i got a bit choppy. But the 6D still maintained a very smooth frame rate even when I was recording video. So the Canon 6D is a bit of a pricey camera, and the main question is, would I still want to use this as a field monitor if I was only using the Canon T2i? And the short answer is absolutely, because I could still frame up my shots with that smooth frame rate, and then after I actually filmed my clip, I could preview it back at its full frame rate just by hitting the preview button, and then in there you could actually see all your video and photos that are saved directly to your camera, and you can just preview the videos with the click of a button. Click of a button. Tap of a button, because it's a tablet. So you tap, 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 tap. <laughs> To make the preview feature even better, you can save photos and videos from your camera directly to your tablet. And this is great if you need to like take the tablet off of your camera and share it with someone else. Now, in order to preview the video, you do have to download another app called MX Player, but that app is completely free and DSLR controller will take you directly to it the very first time you try to preview video. 
One other feature that I love about this app is that you could set overlays on top of your video. So you could set crop guidelines for 6x9, 4x3, and other frame sizes. You could even overlay a rule of thirds grid to help frame up your shots. Plus, if your camera has a gyroscope like the 6D does, then you could view that as well and make sure that your camera is completely leveled. Now you could also use this app in a very useful way if you're just shooting photos. If you don't have a laptop but you would still like to have a preview monitor as you're shooting, well all you have to do is press the manual button and then the preview button and just start taking pictures through your camera's viewfinder. You'll see the newly shot images appear on your tablet and you actually have the option to check the photo's histogram levels. It will even show you a clipping warning if your image is clipping to either black or white. If you want to see your images full screen as you're shooting, just go into the settings and choose image review follow shot and then select full screen mode. Your images will now be full screen as you're shooting and this is really really helpful in checking your image if it's focused properly because it will just about always look like it's in focus on the back of your camera even if it's not. I ended up shooting my wife's entire baby shower just by judging it off of the back of the camera's screen and just about all the photos were out of focus. I maybe got about like 12 good shots in focus, but man, I really should have just like zoomed in to really check my focus because that's what you're supposed to do when you know, you're shooting and you're just looking at that preview on the back of your camera. You're supposed to zoom in to double check if it's actually in focus. I forgot to do that, so just about all the shots were out of focus, but I really wish that I had this tablet back then because it would have saved me a lot of headache and I would have actually gotten some good photos from that shoot. Now there are a lot of other features and tweaks that you could find within the settings menu of this app, but that's really all just icing on the cake. What I'd like to go over now are a few simple additions that you could add to your tablet to really make it into a proper field monitor. Now once you have this app working on your tablet, the first thing that you're really going to want to do is mount it either onto your camera directly or to put it onto a tripod as a stand. So I found this awesome little thing called Tab Mount by iStabilizer. And what it is, it's a simple grip that will extend to fit pretty much any type of tablet. And on the back of it though, there's a quarter 20 thread, so you could fit this directly onto your tripod. Or if you have one of these little hot shoe ball head mounts, you could put it right on top of your camera. So the next awesome little feature that I wanted to add to my brand new field monitor is a sun hood. This way, if I'm going to be filming outside or even indoors in certain cases, I can just block off any glare that's going to be hitting my monitor screen. Now, I really like getting the most out of the stuff that I use, you know, I like finding different ways to use all my products, you know, for example, turning a tablet into a field monitor. So I just figured I could use this same type of forward thinking into the case that I would end up buying for the tablet. So I found this travel cover for the Nexus 7 that actually seems to be one of the official cases for the tablet. And it's a nice light silicone cover, but it has this awesome flap that I figured I could just use as the top of a sun hood. All I had to do next was go to an arts and crafts store and pick up a piece of this somewhat thick black board and then also some pieces of velcro with the sticky back. I just measured out the pieces that I needed to cut on the board and then I added the velcro pieces to that. I made sure though to put the softer velcro side onto my tablet case. This way when I'm not using the sun hood pieces it won't be scratching up my screen. Now that it's all set up I could easily block off extra light from hitting my tablet just by sticking these pieces of cardboard onto my case. So if you guys have a Canon camera and you have an Android tablet then it's really a no-brainer to just download DSLR controller and have a blast using it because it's only eight dollars that you're going to be spending and even if it doesn't really work 100% for you and your needs it's not a huge waste you know. Now on the other hand, if you're just looking for a field monitor and you don't have an Android tablet, I'd still consider getting an Android tablet and getting this app because the Android tablet that I got, the Nexus 7, is 200 bucks. A decent field monitor is going to cost you 400 bucks at least. And you're still ahead of the game by $200. And those $400 monitors, the Nexus 7 actually has a better resolution screen on it. Plus, using DSLR controller, you could actually control your DSLR with it. You know, I could change my shutter speed, aperture, ISO, everything. I could change pretty much everything that I could change on the back of my camera, I could do on the front of my tablet monitor. So setting it up as a field monitor is a huge benefit and I suggest it to everyone. Now, if you guys want to see more episodes like this, make sure that you like and subscribe to Photography by Greg.
me, Greg. Yay. <laughs> this way, whenever we post new episodes, you guys will be able to learn how to get awesome film and photos on the cheap. Also, make sure you check out our other show, Pimping Pixels, for all things Photoshop and graphic design awesomeness. Now, that will do it for today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time. You see that right there where I'm looking? I'm looking at the field monitor. Yeah, I'm using it right now. <laughs> looking at the camera, looking at the field monitor. Camera, monitor, camera, monitor, camera, monitor, monitor, camera. <laughs> So if you have a Canon camera and you have an Android tablet, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. <laughs> and if you hear the baby crying in the background, it's cause she's in the other room with my wife. So don't think I'm a bad parent cause I'm not going to her right now as she's crying. <laughs> <laughs> the next awesome little feature that I wanted to add was a sunscreen, uh, sun hood, okay. <laughs> Not sunscreen, I'm just gonna pour sunscreen all over my tablet. That looks horrible. <laughs>